what I have before me today is a pair of silver game cubes. One of which should be in uh, fine working condition. And the other one, which uh, I don't recall if it turns off after an hour of playing or it has to be on for an hour before it'll read discs, but it uh, powers on and everything, but it won't, um, like I said, one of those, one of those things was the case. Anyways, after doing some research, it seemed uh, very likely that the disc drive capacitors are probably to blame. I have a couple things I want to try here, essentially, um, before I, I want to fix this one, obviously, is kind of the main, the main goal. And then this one, while I'm learning how to do this anyways and have the tools, um, I figure I will go ahead and replace the capacitors in here, not only for the disk drive, but for uh, the main CPU board as well. And same thing in here, we'll replace the optical drive caps. We'll test that out. If that seems to have gone well and we've restored the proper functionality of it and we haven't lost the functionality of this one, then we'll, um, uh, I, I want to consider doing the uh, a region mod switch and a Xeno chip mod, uh, which are the Xeno chip be, uh, being now very common and uh, cheap modification you can do. Got the whole kit for 20 bucks, I think. So definitely very affordable and uh, seems pretty straightforward to do. And it's just a matter of uh, locating um, the actual game ROMs themselves. That's the part I don't. I uh, don't necessarily know where to where to go just yet, but that may be solved by the time I actually get this video posted, so we'll see. You'll notice on these cubes that um, even though they're both silver, um, we have uh, two different uh, output variations here. This is the older variation with the uh, com uh, digital component out and the... Uh, the composite and this one is composite only uh composite and a s video also will um, come out of there this silver cube having the component uh the digital out port is noteworthy because this was around the time that they transitioned to just doing the this uh the traditional av only uh because you know this wasn't a popular enough option or whatever so they're saving manufacturing costs so as far as the normal colored game cubes go I believe the silver one with the uh, with the AV out is kind of the most uncommon. It's again, nothing uh, insanely rare or anything, but it's uh, it's fairly uncommon just because of the the timing of when the silver cubes came out and when they stopped uh, manufacturing the digital AV out option on there. So just a little fun fact. So we got all the uh, capacitors from Console Five. Um, may or may not have heard of them, but uh, they're a great supplier. Um, they, you can just uh, spec all this stuff yourself, I suppose. But they've gone through the gone through the work and put it all in these nice little kits for you. Um, I got eight of these. So these are the, uh, the optical drive, and they're universal for both CPU varieties or ranges, range varieties. So uh, that seems to be a pretty common issue. So I figure uh, I know I'm going to use at least four of those right now, and then uh, in here I have the two different varieties of the computer uh, the motherboard caps and I also have the uh, cap kits for the Game Boy Player uh, accessory so should have all the uh, you know a little bit of supplies for playing, uh, repairing GameCubes there for a bit and you'll notice these are all the um, surface mount style uh, electrolytics so there can be a little bit of a challenge and uh, I did get this new um, soldering iron to try for this project as well with the tweezers, so we see how it works out. Well, so this one does not seem to be booting at all. Doesn't even seem to be spinning. So, all right. So that's the one I thought was working just fine, but apparently it's not, so that's that's just uh, quite all right, no worries. So, let's see if that one wants the same thing.
Oh, look at that. Yeah, that one's actually booting up. I think it cuts out though. Let's see. Tonight, on a very special episode of Cell Damage, will Violet finally learn of the disease that's slowly killing her? Will Cinder finally become house trained? I'm just gonna leave this one on so we can get to reproduce the issue. Because I guess that was the one that it cut out of the Leave it on for a little bit. Oh, well, this one seems to, uh, it would still be working, so um, it magically fixed itself while it was on the shelf, and this one magically broke itself while it was on the shelf. So yeah, figure that out if you like. But um, so, anyways, I'm probably gonna leave this one on in the background just because uh, you know, just to see if it again, see if I can reproduce the fault that it uh, that it had before. But anyway, slice it. These consoles are getting to the age where capacitor replacement is is a good idea. I have a bunch of other older consoles, you know, even older than this, the Super Nintendo and stuff like that, that really should be recapped, you know, but, uh, um, yeah, we're going to figure that out later, but for today, we're focusing on the cubes, so, um, so I'll probably leave this one on and uh, start tearing into this one and, um, see if we can get it to work. Okay, so I got the lid off here, and, uh, been a while since I've taken one of these apart and I forgot it's pretty complex if I'm starting to recall correctly. So this no, anyways, be fine. I got the sensor covered up there because I don't want to scratch that up at all. So I got it covered up with our nice little business card the from console five. And uh this is for those who may be interested, this is the that's the model number. I think you would be able to know that from the uh, the fact that it's the analog, oh, what am I trying to say? Composite only output. <clears throat> That's the only differentiation. Anyway, so I believe we got to take all these screws out along the edge here. We got <clears throat> take this fan out of place. Uh, controller ports. You got to pretty much tear the whole thing down to get at the parts we need to. All right, so we got the optical drive separated here. Um, I'm just going to focus on that for now. We got this uh, ribbon cable disconnected. It's got one of those little push locks on it there. Um, looks like I have to disconnect the lid switch. Those are soldered on there, so I'm going to not have not unplug either of these two. Obviously, at least on this end. And then take the screws out, and I think on the other side is the capacitors we need to get at. Okay, that really was a pain in the ass, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's ribbon cable. Yeah, I don't like messing with stuff like that. Just basically leave this all attached unless you want to desolder that whole ribbon cable, which I really don't. I don't know. Might not be too bad, but I do, I'd rather not. So anyways, these are the capacitors in question here. And we replace all of them. I don't see any alarming signs of... Uh, Leakage or anything, but I'm gonna go ahead and replace all of them, and then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and check the potentiometer on the back of here as well. well. This iron seems to come up to temp pretty quick. Okay, so after some fiddling around with it and cussing, I actually have found the uh, the hot tweezers to be pretty nice, uh, um, pretty nice way to take them off at least. Um, still kind of iffy on if that's necessarily the best way to reinstall. Um, I was able to pull it off on this one. This one I just did with the regular iron, which I also have heated up now. So I'm using that to clean up the pads after I remove them. I got two of the uh, small, the 4 volt 47s here, and then the uh, 100 mic there. 
6.3. So I'm going to clean all these up. See, these are kind of in a cluster, so I had to kind of do them all at once. Then I'm going to start by I'm gonna clean all of them up, and then I'll start by reinstalling that one, and then this one, and then this one. I'm pretty sure I didn't get any of that on camera, actually. Oh, well. So this is the GameCube I'm in the process of Xeno mod chipping and doing the uh, capacitors and whatnot on. This is the easier motherboard as far as capacitor replacements go. It's the 50, uh, yeah, CPU 60. So there's only three caps to replace. And um, we should, so it should be a short, easy job, but of course, I managed to lift the pads on this one, so I have uh, just spent quite a bit of time fiddling around with uh, soldering on a couple pieces of magnet wire to replace the traces I pulled right up. I fortunately, was able to get everything on this side of the board, didn't have to run any wires around to the back side or anything, so I'm going to count myself lucky for that. And I think I should be able to just put the capacitor in the same place and maybe hold it down with a little dab of glue or something like that and just solder to the magnet wires there. And I think that shouldn't make any obstruction for this capacitor that I didn't lift the pads on, and then the you know, only other ones over there. So that'll be done. Um, I don't know if I'll do the region switch on this one or not. Uh, I'll have to think about that. But look at, look at my notes, I guess. It's actually been a while since I took this apart, so I'm gonna have to kind of catch up and remember where I was in this particular project. So yeah, that's uh that's where I'm at at the moment. I'm about to uh yeah, about to put those new capacitors in and then I'll uh check my notes. All right, so the optical side as I forgot was already recapped. So uh, unfortunately, I did uh yeah, it would have been nice to make some better notes, but did take it all the way apart and then uh, look closely at the caps and realize that they were indeed the ones I had already replaced. So that's where I had left off in this project. It just needed the motherboard caps, the three there, and the and the Xeno chip installed. So as you can see, that's now done. We used a 30 gauge magnet wire here, which I used before. Um, it's not the cleanest job. I haven't uh, I haven't wiped the flux off yet, um, but it's it's not too bad. Uh, I like mounting it with that screw there. That's uh, a nice secure place to put it. It's out of the way. And the magnet wire uh, keeps everything nice and just minimal minimal space taken up, you know. So it's good to get the wiring diagram and uh, double check everything. This is what I went ahead and wrote down. reference numbers there and the circled numbers are referencing that and then I have the the uh, pins on the on the pads labeled there too that's the just as they are on the board so pin pin 1 pin 5 10 6 etc and then the circled numbers are which one of those yeah you're connecting Position six to pin one, position five to pin two, etc. You know, and then so you just pay attention to that. But there's probably better resources for that out there. I'm just showing you what I used. Truth rapidly incoming here. I'm trying to pop the. Uh, let's see. I'll turn on this TV in a while. Let's see if it works. Alright, TV works. Get the chip in. And uh, hold down peace.
All right, so as it turns out, uh, there was no no video output because of uh, one of the the or just the one capacitor that I botched. I pulled the pads up on. Uh, apparently, I did not get a good solder joint to one leg of the capacitor. It was just kind of floating there. So, uh, resoldered that down, and so that seemed to have solved the video issue. And I think I have the potentiometer on the optical drive tweaked. I adjusted it to 175 ohms. And that seems to seems to be working. So we'll see if it uh, see if it's repeatable. I guess is a good good thing to check. Ah, dang it! I need a controller. As you can see, we have Swiss booted up here. Um, on this one, there's no uh, serial port 2. It's the later revision. So I'll be doing through memory card slot B um, with uh, the Wii style uh, SD card adapter there. So that's how we'll be. Uh, we'll download the latest version of Swiss onto there. And then I think I got a 64 gig card for this guy. So. Yeah, it's for this is cubes for a friend of mine actually, and I've had it had it in my possession for a long time with the intention of uh, first of all he was just having some trouble with the disc being read or or whatever, and that was about the time I was getting into doing the the uh, Xeno chip mod for my own cube. So um, and I got a couple couple extra Xeno chip kits. So I said, yeah, let me I'll, re I'll recap it so it'll be more reliable with the disc drive, and then. Uh, uh, Xeno chip, but that was a while ago now, uh, over a year ago actually. So <laughs> feels good to finally get it off the. Uh, it'll get back to him, and uh, it'll be off my project bench as well. So, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll bundle some games up for him and put this put the cube back together and be looking good. Uh, thanks for watching.